To get the most out of any camera, you're gonna to wanna to be shooting the camera in manual mode and in its log setting. But what does that even mean? Well, I'm gonna teach you how to shoot in complete manual, the best settings to set your camera to, and at the end, I'm gonna share a few exposure tips for shooting in Canon Log 3. With these settings, you're gonna take full advantage of the Canon R6 Mark II's video capabilities. So with that, let's hop in. So first up, set the camera mode to video mode and actually set your mode dial to manual. Starting with the red menu on page one, we will select our record movie size. If you're going for a cinematic quality, you're gonna to wanna to shoot in 4K, 24 frames per second, IPB. You can choose to shoot in IPB light as well. This drops the quality just by a hair. Most people won't notice it, but it does save you a ton in storage. Now onto page three. I set the AV to one eighth stop increments enabled just so I can adjust the aperture a little more finely than the third stops that it comes in naturally. Now let's move to page four. You're gonna to wanna to set your white balance manually for the setting that you're in. You can use this using the Kelvin or setting a custom white balance. If you'd like to learn how to set a custom white balance on your Canon camera, you can check out my video here. Next, we'll move on to the Canon log settings. This is where we're going to enable C-Log3, which is the highest dynamic range that this camera supports. We're gonna turn off the view assist option. And for characteristics, I like boosting the sharpness just by three because I don't like doing it in post, but feel free to experiment and choose to add or not have sharpness added to your video. And for color space, we'll set that to cinema gamut for the most color range. Next, let's move on to page five. In the lens aberration corrections, I turn all of these on, except for focus breathing. Not all lenses support the focus breathing compensation, but if that's something that matters to you, you can have it enabled. Just know that it only works in certain lenses as of right now. Next, go to the ISO noise reduction option, and here I set it to standard. If you're a data purist, you can disable this. However, for most shooters, I think noise reduction in the camera is really good, and at standard, it's a great job, but if you can want less, you can go to low, and that also does a good job of removing the colored chromatic aberrations. If you'd like to see the difference between all these different settings, you can check out my video on noise reduction here. On to page seven. We're gonna turn on the image stabilization, but leave digital image stabilization off. If for some reason your IS is grayed out, that means you have a lens with image stabilization, so you're gonna actually want to use the dial on the lens to enable or disable this. Next, go into shooting info displays. And under histogram display, I like to set this to brightness, and that'll be one of the tools we'll use to expose later on in this video. I personally set this to large so I can really see what's going on, and it will cover a big part of the uh, screen, the LCD screen, but you only need it for a little moment to set the exposure. Once you have your exposure, you can turn off that graph. Next, we're gonna go to the first page of the autofocus menu. Here, we're gonna select Movie Servo AF. Make sure that's enabled, and then under Subject Detection AF, we're gonna set this to Subject Only. This is gonna prevent the camera from racking focus from the subject to the background if your subject happens to move out of the frame. This is more natural, especially when you look at movies so that the camera's not constantly hunting for something to focus if there's no subject. Now that we're done with the settings, let me give you a few tips for exposing in C-Log3 since you're not gonna to want to change your shutter speed, most likely not gonna to want to change your aperture, and you definitely don't want to adjust the ISO unless it's a really dark environment. For C-Log3 to have the most dynamic range, keep the ISO at 800. Now, if you're outdoors, you're gonna see that there's a lot of light and it'll be hard to expose when you have an ISO setting so high. So one, you're gonna need an ND filter and then you have three options for actually adjusting the exposure. Let's start off with zebras. Zebras are striped patterns on an image that appear at a certain brightness value that you're going to set. So let's set this on the Canon R6 Mark II. On the seventh page of the red menu, you'll see zebra settings and you're gonna to want to enable this. For zebra pattern, I recommend using only one at a time, so I would use zebra one. And then this is where you adjust the value. If you're gonna be exposing for people, you actually want the zebra pattern to be around 55% and adjust the exposure until you start to see zebra patterns appear on your subject's face. When you see those patterns appear, then you know that part of the subject's face is perfectly exposed and you can set your exposure to that level. If you're not exposing for a subject and you're just exposing for the outdoors, you can set this value to 90% so that you know where your highlights are and you can avoid clipping them. So with the zebra pattern on, adjust exposure until you start to see zebra patterns in the highlights and then you can stop right there. Now you've protected your highlights and the rest of the scene should for the most part be properly exposed, especially if you're shooting something outdoors. 
Next, we have the option to expose with false color. In the same seventh page that the zebras were on, you should see false color. You can click enable, and when you go back to the viewfinder, you'll see that you have a bunch of colors on your screen. If we go back to that menu option, you can see what the index looks like. For people, we're gonna wanna be one stop above 18% gray, which in this case is called color coded pink. So adjust the ND and exposure until your subject has a nice pink pattern on their face and you know that part of the image is properly exposed. And then if you have no subject, then I would just avoid clipping the highlights. On the false color index, anything in red is clipping and anything yellow is right under clipping. So I would adjust the exposure or the ND just until you start to see a bunch of yellow and hopefully no red in your image. And then you know you're protecting your highlights. And now my favorite method for exposing is actually the histogram. We already set this up, so all you need to do in the viewfinder is hit info a few times until the histogram graph pops up. The histogram is a visual representation of the brightness values of your image. Let me show you how to read it. From left to right, you have darkest to brightest parts of your image. And then from bottom to up, you have how many pixels fall within each of those ranges. When exposing your image, you really want to protect your highlights at all cost. So make sure that none of the pixels are lined up on the very far right side of the histogram where they're losing data. And the same could be said for the shadows. If you have a big clump of them on the left wall, then you're losing a lot of data in the shadows. So you wanna make sure you're leaving enough space between those two edges so that you capture all the data. This may not be possible in every lighting condition, like a concert or something like that, but if we shoot outdoors, I'll show you how this works. In this outdoor scene, I'll adjust the ND just until the highlights are not touching the very tippy top right side of the histogram. And I found with the histogram, you don't want the pixels too close to the right side, so I leave a little bit of a gap by adjusting my ND further. With all that information in mind, now you're ready to start shooting the most cinematic quality video from your Canon R6 Mark II. But video is only really half the equation. In fact, some people may say that sound is more important than video quality. So if you truly want to make your videos amazing, check out my audio tutorial here. Thank you all for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or thoughts, leave them in the comments section down below. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.